All right, guys. Um, this episode is going to be... I'm going to call it episode 5.5. Um, I finished up the front seats in the last video. I essentially finished them up. Um, but... There's a couple of things I started to do on the back seat. I was, I was just going to skip over that, but um, after going back, I ended up videoing it anyway. And going back, I realized there's some some points that I kind of I feel like some people might find useful. So I actually decided to kind of throw together some of these videos that I took. Um, there's. There's some stuff in there I think you guys will find useful. So it might not make total sense the way the video is put together. Um, it seems kind of random, but it kind of is. I just I shot the video without the intent of necessarily releasing it. So no really good rhyme or reason around the word of the videos and stuff like that. So um, that being said, uh, in this in this. Uh, call it episode 5.5 so um what i did is i'm going to go over the rear seat boxes and what i did on those um and some of the, the issues i had to work through um and also there's some other info on the front seats um but i'm not sure if i'm going to include that or not here so if anything hopefully you guys find some of this info useful um so uh stick around here we go where I'm at here with the back seats. Um, I got this front piece. I actually put that in a little bit ago. Once I started the front seats, I actually had some peanut butter left over, so I had put this in at that time. Um, but for the back piece here, um, I essentially went a little bit lower than the original one was. I don't want to make this a huge step up because um, I'm thinking about putting like a platform that goes from there to the back that kind of covers up the trim pump and batteries um or I don't, i'm not sure which side what's going on yet but a platform that you could theoretically kind of walk on or use for storage because um and i also dipped it down slightly here in the middle you can see because i just wanted to have a little bit more access to the front of the motor if i need it um with the belts and that kind of stuff um so the motor comes up a good bit it's it's uh it comes up to right about here so wanted to maximize the space I had there to work on it. Um, I actually wondered if I should have gone even lower, but the seat that I'm putting back in has a vinyl covered piece that runs right across about this level. It's actually going to span this gap, so I don't want to go too low there, so we'll see how that goes. But um, this is getting long-winded to make a single point that I haven't made yet. Um, one thing I noticed when I started to coat these pieces in resin these long pieces I didn't have pieces that were quite that long up in the bow seat area but these pieces back here are 68 inches almost from side to side and they're only half inch plywood so I noticed when I put resin on them in the CSM when they cured some of them kind of warped a little bit this one here is actually pretty straight that one turned out okay but this one back here it's probably gonna be hard to see on camera but it has all accentuated but it basically has a bow like this it's not a lot maybe a quarter inch or a half inch across that span but it's enough so what i'm doing is i'm going through here and putting oops, bug on me. i'm putting like little cleats so i screwed in a piece on each side and a piece here and what that's going to do is support kind of a frame here it's almost like a cabinet face frame that I made so it'll give a nice kind of cap surface to the top of this so these will help support it on the back and sides and it'll be on top of this front piece here so you can see is I actually made these a half inch lower than the original height of where the top of the seat was here so the face frame that I made will sit on top of this and then I'll bring it up to this height then I can sand this down and I'll tab it all in so this is a half inch down as well same with those. I actually used a chalk line to snap across here to make sure I got a nice straight line from side to side. Um, so that alone isn't going to do much for that bow that I was talking about. But what I'm going to do then is when I put that face frame piece in, there's a two and a half inch or three inch wide piece that runs this whole length 
And then, I don't know if you guys know what face frame is on a cabinet, but it's basically kind of like a, I don't know, Google it, you'll see. So the nice thing is, is that that width, the two and a half inch or three inch wide piece that runs along here has a lot of stiffness and um, this <laughs> front to back direction. It's, it bows up and down easily because it's only half inch thick, but this way it's very stiff. So what that's gonna do is when I screw that piece into this back piece, it'll draw it nice and straight. But I did wanna show you this kind of little detail here. So um, that actually wasn't the plan, but it's kind of proof that sometimes you gotta improvise as you go. I mean, things don't always work out perfect. If this thing was perfectly straight, I probably wouldn't have had to make these cleats. And I probably, I don't know, I might or might not have made them. Um, but I saw that it was bowed a little bit and I had to kind of improvise, so. You know, you kind of figure it out as you go. This is my first boat restoration, so definitely not an expert, but um, figuring it out. Oh, one other thing. I want to show you guys what I did here. So right now, if I take a hose and wash out my boat, which I need to do desperately, um, all the spots have a way for water to drain from front to back. So if water gets underneath the seat boxes up here in the middle, there's a tube underneath the deck that goes all the way under. Well, it actually goes to the ski locker through the first bulkhead. Ski locker drains back to the bulkhead right about here and under the gas tank and all the way back to the bilge. But Anything that gets on top of the seat boxes on the sides will drain down behind here, behind the bulkhead that I'm gonna put in there on the deck. And then they would come back to this piece and have really nowhere to go. So what I did is I actually drilled a hole because on where my deck ends and I kind of filled it with peanut butter, it's kind of concave here. So it actually makes kind of almost like a little gutter that the water can travel back and collect back here. And it'll go in this hole same thing on the other side in this hole so what I did is actually took a three-quarter inch PVC pipe and cut it in half lengthwise on the bandsaw and I laid it inside the seat boxes and peanut buttered it in on each side what happens is if any water gets in the cabin here um, on the deck it'll naturally kind of pull to either side depending on which way the boat's leaning it'll go through that half pipe half tube through the seat box and out the back into there and then drain into the bilge. Um, so yeah, moving along actually, I mean, in all reality, aside from the engine mounts, I'm pretty close to being done with fiberglass. Um, now, when I say fiberglass, I'm not counting the fairing process, but uh, other than that, I'm kind of starting to, I feel like I'm starting to see the home stretch on um, putting some gel coat down here. I even ordered some carpet today for, I'm gonna do the side panels again and carpet down to the floor level on both sides. Back here, the original boat had this like a vinyl channeling fabric, which is really expensive if you wanna buy it through sale right, which I don't wanna do. I also don't really wanna make it myself, but I, I really actually kinda like the look of it a lot. Um, so I, I kinda wanna put it back, but. We'll see when we get there. I mean, to be honest with you, it's, what is it? June 25th today. I would really like to get out on this boat this summer. If I'm gonna mess with vinyl and seats and all that kind of stuff, it's probably not gonna happen. So I may be putting this thing back together with all the original vinyl and stuff that I got in it, which was kind of beat up. Some of the panels were okay. Some of the seats and stuff were in pretty bad shape. But that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a short video, but uh, figured you guys might find that interesting, so we'll uh, see you next time. Um, hopefully, by then, I'll be working on the engine mounts. See you guys, thanks for watching. All right, there it is. So, when I said face frame, that's what I was talking about this rectangular piece going the whole way around that screws in to those cleats I had. So, when this thing all cures up. I have peanut butter in there now for the fillets. I'm not going to get to tabbing it tonight, unfortunately. So It's probably going to be a while until I get back on this thing. Um, I'm going away for like a week, so at the end of this week, and it's going to be a while. So.
It's probably gonna sit like this for a while, but uh, I feel good. This weekend I got a lot done. Back seat's basically uh, in, gotta tab it, but front seats are essentially done. They're ready for fairing, other than cutting out the holes, but that'll be a 20 minute job. Yeah. I'm excited. Gonna go boat in. <laughs>